Uh, yeah, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, about my research project. Um, it's a longer term study, um, so I'm going to be talking about more of the concept um, behind it and uh, it's kind of kind of reminder of some, some of the management stuff when it comes to our cow nutrition um, and being able to th uh, talk about a long term study. And here over the next few years, uh, Dr. Anhart and Mullenix and others may may have some more of the data information uh, to be able to share with you. Um, but as Dr. Reinhardt mentioned, I have a very strong uh, background in, uh, in cow-calf operations. I, I grew up with, with a fairly large cow herd, and, and my dad always emphasized the importance of taking care of our cows properly um, for what they need, no matter what stage of production. And whether they're lactating, and, you know, a young calf or a large calf, or, uh, or they're, they're, they're in late pregnancy as a dry cow. And, and all of those different scenarios have a different uh, different nutritional requirements. Um, so take for example, our, our here's our dry cow. Uh, she's in, she uh, may be in mid to late gestation, um, so she's got that that growing fetus in there. She doesn't have a lactation requirement after we, after she's weaned a calf, but she's got that growing growing calf inside of her, and, and we need to to think about that uh, nutrient requirements for that. And then after calving is that as that calf continues to grow and that cow meets peak uh, peak lactation and, and we need to get her bed, bred back um, at, in an efficient, timely manner, um, her nutritional requirements are changing rapidly. And then even after we wean that calf, we have to consider, we, are we keeping that heifer as a replacement? Will, will we uh, need to develop a nutrition plan for her? Or if it's a steer, uh, we're taking that steer on and, and if we're not, someone else will uh, be feeding that steer and it'll eventually end up as, as a carcass for our meat supply. So we need to take, take, a, take a step back and, and look at our nutrition program and, and think about how it's affecting not only our cow, um, but her calf as it, as it develops and, and throughout its life. Um, so my research um, project is, is taking a look at, at how cow nutrition during mid and late pregnancy that that uh, that last uh, six months, if you will, um, depending on on how spread out your calving season is, um, and and how that nutrition program uh, affects that offspring uh, on down the road. And this concept, we we kind of refer to it as fetal programming. And I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, this was an idea that was initially uh, found and identified in humans. Um, after World War II, several countries in, in Europe. Um, the population went through extreme famine. Um, so a lot of mothers that were pregnant during that time in different periods um, didn't have enough to eat to meet their nutrition requirements for that, for that baby that was developing in, in their uterus. And as those young kids grew up, um, we found that they had a higher incidence of health problems later in life. So recently, um, livestock uh, and animal scientists have been applying this concept to cattle and asking the question, how does our nutrition for our livestock affect um, the future generation's performance? And this isn't always, um, we, we traditionally looked at the changes and, and how it affects the young calf through weaning, um, but, but a lot of these changes are something we'll see on, on down the road. Um, so when I'm talking about feeding the cow um, during pregnancy, there, there's a few different stages where different, different things are developing and, and we're providing nutrients for different processes. Here in the first trimester of the cow, the first three months of pregnancy, she's likely still lactating a calf, and the nutrient requirements for that developing calf in, in her uterus in the cow are not um, especially high compared to her nutrient requirements for lactation and maintenance. Um, this is a period when we're developing the placental tissues. So that placenta is very important uh, for pr providing the blood supply as the calf um, grows significantly at a, at a faster pace later in pregnancy. We're also developing the vital organs uh, during early months of pregnancy. Um, in, the, in the second trimester, in, in months three to six, uh, we're, we're especially looking at um, a development of muscle fibers. And this is the number of muscle fi fibers that are being established and, and critically important when we think about the carcass that steer, steer will produce later on down the road. Um, so making sure that the cow has enough nutrition during months three to six is, is gonna have a big impact on, on the quality and size of that carcass that that calf, calf will have. And then here in, in light, later gestation, in the last trimester, months six through nine, um, this is when 75% of, of the fetal growth occurs. And this is when the cow's nutrient requirements to, to feed that fetus, that growing fetus, um, are, are, are significantly growing. 
And this is a period where those, those uh, muscle fiber tissues that, that are growing and developing are, are starting to grow larger as, as the calf grows larger, but we're also establishing those fat cells. Um, those fat cells are especially important to carcass quality or marbling um, on down the road. So being sure that, that we have enough nutrition there to, to establish these different tissues during, during pregnancy, um, it will have a huge impact um, on, on down the road when we're, we're take, talking about our calf. So for my project here in Tennessee, uh, I'm taking the fetal programming idea and applying it to our cow management strategies here in Tennessee. Um, so we have some producers, that, a lot of producers that like to uh, stockpile for, uh, forages stockpiled fescue and we'll graze our cows through that. For our spring calving herds, we'll, we'll graze our cows through the fall and winter on stockpiled forages. Then we have some, some producers that like to feed a little extra to our cows during that dry period. We let, you know, it's not a problem to want your cows to look good. Um, and so, so we're taking a look at that in, in my research in, in those two management scenarios and, and what are those nutrition management strategies, um, how, what influence do they have not only on, on the calf and as it's developing and, and early in life through and its performance through weaning, um, but we're also going to continue this over the next couple of years and look at the performance of those steers and heifers on down the road. And, and looking at, at uh, nutrition in the dry cow during pregnancy isn't a new concept. Uh, it's really interesting. I looked at one of the first art, uh, research articles published in Animal Science was on, on late pregnancy cow nutrition. And so this is something we've been looking on um, for many, many years. Um, and then back in the 70s and 80s, um, we really got to looking at um, how, does, how does that calf, uh, how does that cow's um, nutrition really affect that, that, uh, that postnatal or that early, early young calf um, performance. Um, and we were talking about weak calf syndrome. You may, you may remember that reference. Um, but, but researchers ahead, ahead of me have, have found that uh, a cow's nutrition uh, prior to calving affects calving ease. You know, if we have a really thin or weak cow, or really, really obese cow, they can have problems with calving ease. Um, her nutrition also affects her ability to produce quality colostrum, which we know is the first milk. It's pretty important in getting that calf off to the right start. Um, but not only being able to produce that, um, that cow's nutrition has an impact on how well that calf is able to absorb the proteins um, from, from that colostrum, which is, so it's really important. Um, and then we also want to have a healthy calf. Um, a calf that has a good start off and, and is, has enough nutrients in, in pregnancy and in the early life sets it up to have, have a healthy and good performance all the way through weaning. Um, and taking this concept on a longer term scope, um, some fo folks in Nebraska, researchers at the University of Nebraska have already completed um, some of the initial studies on this fetal programming idea. And, and taking the concept of late pregnancy nutrition and, and looking at how it affects the calves long term. Here for some infor uh, heifer information, um, we're looking at uh, weaning weight. We found that uh, they were either they were grazing their cows during pregnancy on, on uh, native range grass or, or corn residue, corn stalk residue, and, and they were either supplementing their cows or, or letting them uh, graze on only what forage was available in the pasture. And we found that um, calves that had uh, had the, the cows that had better nutrition during pregnancy, their calves performed better through weaning, had a heavier weaning weight, and there's a tendency for those calves to, to gain better and have better efficiency throughout the weaning process. And as we take those heifers out and we develop them and, and, and replace them in the herd, um, we find that, that they have better, uh, the better reproductive performance and efficiency in that first calving season. Um, heifers are reaching puberty earlier, which is really important because we want to get a few cycles in before uh, before time of breeding for that heifer so that she's more fertile and more likely to conceive. And those heifers that had a better environment during pregnancy, a better nutrition level for the mother, um, more of those heifers were pregnant in the first breeding season and more of those heifers calved earlier in the breeding season. And that, that would be pretty important because we want to give those heifers as two-year-olds more time to breed back when they're nursing their first calf. Um, so this is, this is really kind of some of the traits we're going to be looking at when we apply this study here to the forages and the cattle herds in Tennessee is, is looking at how does the cow's nutrition affect the performance of the heifer and, and her longevity and performance in the herd, especially as a two-year-old that on down the road. When we take a look at the steers, we see similar performance up through weaning, you know, higher weaning weights for calves that, whose mothers had a better nutrition plane. Um, we also see a tendency we'll be looking at um, with calves in my study, their performance throughout the feeding phase. Um, are they more efficient 
Um, what, you know, which feeding strategy are the calves more efficient? Um, does elevated nutrition um, really improve their, their ability to, to, uh, to turn the pounds of feed into gain? And, and what about the carcass characteristics? Uh, this research in Nebraska kind of showed a tendency for, for calves that had better nutrition. Their cow, the, the mothers had plenty, of, you know, plenty to eat and were getting the supplement. Uh, better nutrition had a tendency to produce a larger carcass with better quality grades. Um, so, so that's, I mean, you know, if you're feeding your calves and you're retaining them, whether you're feeding them at home or, or you're carrying them on through the feedlot, that, that could be dollars, dollars in your hand um, just by taking better, better care of your cows and meeting their nutrient requirements and, and feeding that fetus during late pregnancy. Um, so it's, it, over the next couple of years, we'll, we'll be able to follow the calves. We'll be weaning in August and, and carrying them on throughout the feeding phase and retaining our heifers and be able to have more information on that.